and he will talk us on the experience and results on, on laser therapy. Dr. Hans, if you are ready to, to, to share your screen. Yes, I think I'm there. Can you hear me? Is the sound yeah. there? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, perfect. perfect. Okay. Uh, caros colegas, uh, meu nome é João Bayer, uh, sou uh, austríaco, não sou alemanha, não sou alemão. <laughs> sou austríaco, é, mas uh, depois de 500 anos, uh, eu vivo na Freiburg, na Alemanha, and um, Freiburg is here. I'm going back to English is better for me. We are uh, only uh, 404 hours apart from each other, and um, I'm very happy to be part of this very interesting session. Um, I hate Corona for not being uh, able to be there um, in person, but um, well, better better uh, digital than, than not together. And so um, the, the, the title for my talk that I was given is uh, the experience and the results of laser and in the treatment of uh, pilonidal disease. And um, as I said, I'm a dermatologista and, and therefore I maybe have also a, a few different thought patterns again. And I was then asking myself the question, what can the laser do? In, in the treatment of the pilonidal disease. Uh, and, um, and this brings me up to this man. This is uh, Theodor Harold uh, Mayman. I don't know if, if you know him, but he was the man who uh, invented the first laser. And it was a diode laser, actually, the same that we're using right now for the treatment of pilonidal sinus. And he had this famous uh, saying, Mayman. He said, laser is a solution and it's uh, looking for a problem because at that point, I think he didn't even uh, realize what, what powerful tool he invented uh, for us doctors in our everyday work. And um, laser is a solution. And what solution can laser offer us in the treatment of the pilonidal sinus? And there's not only the treatment of the pilonidal sinus, as we uh, heard and saw already, but laser can also help us for the prophylaxis of the recurrence of pilonidal sinus, of course, with laser epilation. And just to, um, uh, we already saw, saw the graphic once before, but just for the better understanding again, let's have a look at this graphic, especially please focus on the left side. Um, this is, shows us how tissue interacts with laser. The blue curve that I guess you're all familiar with is the water absorption curve. But of course, there's different chromophores in our skin. And the green curve, the interesting one this time, is the melanin. It's the melanin absorption of the laser. And here we see in the visible light area between 690, 800, up to 1000 nanometers, we have a high absorption of the laser energy in the melanin. And this is what we take uh, use for, what we make use for if we do a laser epilation for the pilonidal scenes. Just one more for everyone to uh, understand how does the laser, uh, in, in, because I think not all our dermatologists in the round. I use, with the laser, I use high intense light of a single, single wavelength. And then this laser energy is selectively absorbed by my targeting structure. And no matter if it's water, like in the, with, with the laser for the veins or for the pilonidal sinus, or if it's a hair, and in the hair, the chromophore that I'm targeting is the melanin. And the melanin absorbs the, the, the laser energy and thereby the hair is being destroyed. And we already heard of the um, important role of the hair in the development of the disease. And so it's no wonder that it's been in 2005, so that's all, oh my God, it's 16 years already that we had the first case reports that could show us that the, the epilation with the laser could help us in treatment of uh, this disease. This is the first report, report where two patients, one had a congenital pilonidal cyst and the other one had an acquired and both patients had, after multiple incisions, a kind of surgeries, and always had a recurrent disease, as we all know, which is one of the big problems in managing the disease. 
each of these patients received six treatments of laser epilations. Patient one after that had three and a half years of no recurrences and patient two had one and a half years of follow-up time. Here's a picture of patient two. And I mean, if you see this picture, this is really a really hairy, hairy patient. But I think we all can agree. And also, as we saw in the, in the, in the video from uh, Dr. Kaziella before, all these patients are guys, most of the times are male patients in their 20s and the loads of hairs. See the, the, um, also the, the porous, the, the pit with the small arrow, and you, see, you can see the hair growing in. And this patient then uh, received the laser treatments, and here you see the results after only two treatments. And as you see, alone with the laser treatment, the pilonidal sinus healed off. Not constantly, but it did heal off. But at that time, the authors were so enthusiastic about their results that they, they concluded in this paper, the diode laser, it may be an effective tool in the complete treatment of pilonidal sinus disease. Well, of course, we now know that that is not the case, that you can only treat it with depilation but it's an important adjunctive tool. And now I was just doing a research uh, yesterday again, and there's, uh, there's now 30, more than 38 publications showing that uh, laser epilation is a powerful tool uh, if used in the treatment of the Xenos pilinidalis. One study that I just shortly wanted to show you is because there were 60 patients treated with laser epilation after surgery, but they compared different surgery methods, excision with flap, incision and drainage, excision in primary or excision in secondary intention healing. And they could show in this study that if we use the laser combined with, with these techniques, we can reduce, reduce the, the rate of recurrences, um, especially the, with the excision and the flat, they had real nice results. Of course, incision and drainage, usually up to 50% recurrence, but still they could push it down to 30%. And I think these are really promising results that, um, again, we as a dermatologist have to, to say we should not forget them. Um, the overall recurrence in this study was 13.5%. Uh, there are a few... Uh, dings and dongs, drawbacks with this study because the follow-up time was in, in the half the group of the patients for up to five years, the other group were up to seven years, and interestingly, the recurrence of the disease was in 75% after five years. So modern laser appellation protocols for the treatment of this disease for a disease, we do at least five to six treatments, and we know now that after these five to six treatments, the hair, like one-fifth, will regrow after three to five years, and then we have to pick up our patients again and again do the laser epilation. So, again, laser is a solution looking for a problem. And now if we take a look at the other curve again, the blue curve is um, the water absorption of laser. And if as you see, the, there's different peaks in this curve. The one is down, the first one is the 980 peak, and here the second one, the laser that we're working with right now, is the 1470. It's also a diode laser, like the first described laser by Mayman. And um, interestingly, as you see on your right, there's another peak, and that is 1940. And um, as, as we were talking before, um, um, there's, uh, it would be interesting, it will be interesting in future to see if not different modern laser like the 1940, which is on the market already, will perform even better with less side effects because of the higher absorption in water. Um, we will see, uh, it's, it's a highly interesting area. So, yeah, as we said we before, the peak absorption in water, the thermal damage zone, you heard that. There's different studies out there um, showing that, that the laser, of course, it, it does work. The largest series of patients was published in 2018 by a Greek group, by Papas Christodoulou. Um, 283 patients 
183 male, and the median age was 24, 24 years, so the typical data, but only 183 males surprised me, myself, a bit, okay, but the nice thing is the patients were treated with 1470 and the radial fiber, and after one treatment, 90% of patients, or 214 of 237, they had for one year recurrent free disease. And now one big advantage that I think we did not mention up until yet is, what do we do with these um, 23 patients that didn't respond as well as, as the first group? Well, it's no problem. We can just do another treatment. And that what um, many patients ask me, what do I do if I get a, a recurrence? And with these skin sparing methods and these really, uh, and, uh, we are really soft to the skin and, and, and protecting the skin, we can just repeat the treatment. Or if I, uh, one of the discussion questions before was, what is, what's going to happen if I oversee one of these uh, tracts? Well, it's actually, it's not a problem because you can just then treat the tract later on. And so after the second treatment in this study, again, another 18 of 23 patients uh, recur the, um, got a positive result and were recurrence free. Um, and so I think that's a real nice point that I, uh, the, to, to point out that the truth, it can be repeated. Pit picking can be repeated, laser can be repeated. Radical surgery gets complicated to repeat, like a rhomboid flip. The recurrence rate after one year was 2.5%. So really nice data, nice results, and we heard it before, um, but just also a little bit from my personal experience, there's these different type of fibers out there. There's the bare fiber where the, the, the laser, just the laser beam is just set straight out the fiber versus the radial fiber. And of course, the radial fiber, if you look at the picture, it coagulates uniform in hollow body structures. So you have the same energy distribution throughout the cyst wall. Highly important for me in the treatment. And, and as we can see in a, in, in a histological slide, we then get this one to two millimeters, very precise coagulation zone where we treat the epithelial layer and that is our target. We want to destroy that and we want to cause uh, um, uh, scarring of the tissue so that it, it closures. And with the bare fiber, if you take a look at the, at the picture below, this is with the ultrasound picture that you have the bare fiber on the top right, and it just causes a coagulation zone in front of the layer uh, of the laser. But this is not the area where we want to go. No, we want to heat the area around. Okay. So, um, and as you heard before, of course, uh, um, is, is surgery still important? Yes, surgery is still important, I think, in, in, in highly complicated cases for me, uh, at least. And um, what about minimal invasive surgery? Yep, you already heard it. Pit picking, a highly important method um, because it's very minimal invasive. It can be done as an outpatient treatment. And I will not get too much into it. Um, but as you heard, I do it with a punch biopsy. Uh, um, um, I do it classical style. I just use a two millimeter punch and I love it to work with it. And then you can remove hair and detritus via the pit, uh, plus minus an abscess incision, plus minus a debris more, and then do a secondary intention healing. And um, so the, the question was also uh, to me, how, how do I do the treatment? And so I called it the Freiburg way. And the Freiburg way is, uh, I'm not only doing surgery or laser or, or one of these methods, no. I first always do a laser epilation, then I perform the pit picking, and after that I do a laser ablation not only of the pilonidal sinus, but also of the pit. So, pre and post surgery laser ablation. And um, I think this picture is also nice to see for our colleagues who are not dermatologists. This is a patient that we um, treated with, with the laser epilation and um, 
as you can see, um, sometimes you miss a spot, and this is where he was uh, had still a very, very hairy back, and, uh, and this was still before surgery, but you get um, 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 amazing results with the technique, uh, with the laser. So pre and post surgery, uh, I do the laser epilation. Nice thing is that you can always follow up the patient. They come every six weeks for a laser epilation. And so you can then um, 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 also see how the results will turn out. And here you, uh, we have an intra uh, search picture in the OR. I hope you can see it. The patient had an abscess at the top, which was inside. And we did an incision two weeks before, and we always, like the colleague said before, let it heal first and um, before we start with the surgery. And then within the surgery, we started with the pick picking. And here's a close up for y'all how this looks. And the, the patient had several picks um, that we did with a two millimeter punch biopsy. And then we start removing the hair. And as you can see, it's unbelievable sometimes what you can pull out of these pits. After that follows the laser ablation. We do it with 14 70 and then and, and with the with the um, radio fiber of course and as you heard before also in the discussion um sorry it's saturday and i gotta work in germany and uh, we were a bit late and um <laughs> i'm taking you now to my private practice um yeah as you can see with this picture i always i use a, a one the, the first i go through a, the, the, the a former abscess and go down and close the, the pilonidal sinus and the second was from the um, from the uh, caudal uh, opening that I used then the fiber and go in with it so that I can close it from uh, back again <laughs> so that I can really close the the sinus tract and um, I think this is also important for you that you have a, a precise control of your laser fiber that you know where you are and um and then as you can see in this picture i hope you can see it nicely then i also use the laser to close the pits um being of course with this treatment you really really have to use your your uh, laser protection glasses uh if you do like a, a varicose vein then i do it almost never with, with, with the goggles on, but with this treatment, of course, um, you will have to use um, 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 the goggles because you will put out of the pit to also close these. And this is the result uh, four weeks post-surgery. You can already see the hair is also uh, reduced and we started then with, with the laser epilation and you see the nice results. So this already brings me to my conclusion. Um, yes, the laser is an, a game changer for the uncomplicated pilonidal sinus because it's so precise. You're really quick and the recovery time is way, way shorter than with traditional surgery. My approach, and I think that is the future approach, must be that we combine different uh, treatment approaches, like Dr. Casella said, better together. So laser epilation, and to have a prophylaxis of the recurrence, the pit picking as a um, surgical uh, uh, advancement, but also then combine the laser ablation of the pilonidazines and the pits with the radial fiber. Please use the radial fiber because with the um, a bare fiber you will have way, way more side effects. And um, the future will be important because um, more selective wafer, laser wavelengths um, and maybe new uh, fibers will us allow more selective treatments. And that brings me to the end of my talk. Obrigado. Thank you for having me. And this is my email address. If any one of you has uh, questions, feel free to write me anytime or, of course, later on in the discussion. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Bayer. Thank you a lot for your presentation. Uh, I just just making a, a small comment this just for you to know most of the 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 guys that are watching this this webinar are surgeons general surgeons uh, usually in portugal i don't know probably it's different in germany but uh, the, 
dermatologists usually refer patients to us and i think that that poses a problem to us that that was the for me the most interesting part is the the, the this question on on epilation uh most of us i think uh, usually propose this to patients after surgery we do the the usual uh, shaving then we send patients to to surgery uh, do laser surgery or, or other stuff and after completely complete healing is the time when most of us send patients to the dermatology to to do epilation laser epilation mm -hmm. uh, but you 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 put a, a, a do a, use a different strategy you start with epilation and afterwards you you treat you treat patients and i think this this is very 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 interesting uh, can you just just comment this there's a timing for epilation you do always do this before surgery uh, there's a timing after surgery can you do it uh, during 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 the wound healing or or do you have to wait yeah thank you for the question um it is uh, well the, maybe i maybe i did, did put it a bit wrong i start with the laser epilation at the, at the point when i do surgery the first surgery i, I um, always start with with the, the laser epilation so i do um do all in one do all in one session okay they would of course um, um with with the study with the results that we saw of course it would be um um highly interesting to to um, try to do like a conservative treatment but um, as, as you heard in, in in germany things are a bit different than than the we as dermatologists we do um we do lots of phlebology we do lots of, of laser treatment and, and also surgery so the, the dermatologic surgery is really strong in in germany and um i myself I, up until now, I did not do only laser because I think laser alone is, is not enough. But I start um, the treatment at the time when I do the, the, the laser uh, ablation. And the same session is my first laser session. And after that, um, I'm usually waiting because the, the, with the secondary intention healing, I mean, the patients after four to six weeks, they're good. And this is like the interval that we do is like four to six weeks for the laser. And there's been different studies out there which were really interesting because they had two groups of patients, like 50 patients each. And one of these groups, they were told to do a shaving or use a cream or whatever. And the group of them, uh, the, these 50 patients, after one year, every single patient dropped out. They were all out because they stopped shaving or, or using the cream the laser patients they came they kept coming back to do the laser treatment so i think it's also a great method to keep the patient coming back because you do a single treatment and after that he has um, no more hair growth for the next coming weeks and so the area can really heal in in in, in quiet and yeah. yeah okay okay perfect so you you don't have a time schedule you just do the epilation and you can do in the same in the same timing the 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 treatment of the of the sinus with the with yes. the with the probe yes right? okay that's, that's something new for me okay yeah and Perfect. the good thing is if you uh, do like a spinal anesthesia, anesthesia then the patient okay. is pain free and you can go really high with the laser so you can okay. go, go like really aggressive and um okay. get real yeah, good that's, results that's something that I, we i particularly uh, at least i i usually don't have I, I think of it so that's that's a good 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 info i think for okay. us it's really important for us as surgeons and, and dermatologists and phlebologists and laser therapists to to work uh, closer together because yeah. we we can only participate from each other's knowledge and and, and i think that's yeah. really important i i really agree with that so thank you a lot for your presentation again and for the thank sharing you. Hopefully we'll have you on the question and answer part of the of the webinar. Of and course. we will now go again to the OR to Professor Carmen Maillo.